there are still thousands of people without power in Florida. And if you live in the state of Florida and you would like to power your home with solar panels, they require you to be connected back to the grid. And if the grid shuts down, you have to shut down your solar panels, the energy that's produced from your solar panels. You cannot power your house. You cannot power any of your appliances or equipment during power outages. It is against the law. This sounds like something that is a hoax, right? Well, you can read about it directly from the Miami New Times. You can go to MiamiNewTimes.com, local newspaper out there. You can go to the government, you know, local municipalities, find out about this as well. It is legally mandated to connect your panels to your local electric grid. Now, on top of that, listen to this. Florida FPL, the power company in Florida, is, however, allowed to disconnect your panels from the grid without warning you. They can even put a padlock on it. They can even padlock your stuff. Now, somebody actually tweeted a discussion about how Florida utilities... She goes, my daughter and family, including my eight-year-old grandson, have been without power until today since Irma. Their electric company would not allow them to use their solar panels, which would power the entire house. They live in St. Petersburg. She states the fact that it is illegal to completely disconnect from the electric grid in Florida. We could be powering our own house with our solar panels this entire time in a state of emergency. This is insane. That is insane. Welcome to America, land of the free, home of the brave, where they love you so much that you have to pay for it. You have to pay for their love. And you have to be reliant on the system. You cannot break free because if you attempt to, I mean, so this makes me think, okay, how do they, let's say you've got a really nice solar panel set up in Florida and you decide not to hook up to the grid. What do they do? Do they arrest you? Do they give you a ticket? And then let's say the power's out for a week and the electrical grid that is, and the company that's supposed to be providing you power, they can't and they're shut down. So now you don't have a right to power your house unless you go out and buy a generator. And then you can't buy a solar generator, can you? Because you've got to have that hooked up to the grid, don't you? So do you buy a gasoline generator? You can't have that in your house. What do you do? Uh, can you use a windmill setup? Are they gonna Are they gonna send SWAT teams to people's houses for powering their homes and not hooking up their solar panels that they bought to the grid that overcharges them anyway? So not only do people lose their power, but it's against the law to power their own home and not be connected to your system, to your grid, to your company. Essentially, is what it comes down to. Hmm, sounds like the lobbyists did a very fine job pushing laws in place that protect corporate interests and suppress independent liberties. This is disgusting. This is, in my opinion, beyond unacceptable. It reminds me of places in Oregon I need to do more research on this in a podcast, but I've heard from variables of sources that in Oregon or places in Oregon, you can't collect rainwater and use that. You have to buy water in the land of the free. Huh? If you're somebody in Florida that is still out of power or has lost power in the past or had a situation where you didn't want to hook up to the beast, you didn't want to hook up to the Borg, or you did, and they shut you down and they're trying to push this as well it's a good thing because you can sell additional energy to the system and get paid for it show me the paycheck be like a, a drop in a bucket It'd be like a penny dropped in a thousand dollar bucket both ridiculous Now, my question is, how is this acceptable? How is this allowed? And I saw some video footage yesterday in closing 
in Boston where it looked like clouds of pesticides were coming in, like something out of the, a movie. Like, it was insane. I'll send you the link. I'll leave a link in the video description box. I asked if they'd come on the show and if I could show this footage because it was just crazy. This needs more exposure. I mean, I'm just talking clouds, massive clouds of pesticides. Like something out of Cloverfield. That's the movie I was thinking about, Cloverfield. Kind of had that archetype to it. And this chick's like, oh my gosh, look at this. And she's got a gas mask on. It's like a, it's like a designer fashion gas mask. And then somebody says on the other side of the coin, well, Rex, you know, I've seen before where people, I've been involved in rescues after hurricanes where there were 500 mosquitoes on me at once and people were getting sick. And so that's a necessity. Well, first of all, I don't think that spray nailed from airplanes is a necessity. I think there's options. I think there's alternatives. I think that you can use organic solutions. My goodness, if, if you can, if, if they can create smartphones that can connect with the World Wide Web and talk to people all over the world and do live shows around the world as long as you have an internet connection, oftentimes in the middle of nowhere, you would think that they could come out with an organic solution or a frequency-based solution using frequency technologies. I mean, use 5G and push that towards the mosquitoes. Don't use it towards human beings. If you have V2K technology, voice-to-skull technologies, where you can put voices in people's heads. It's been around for years, for decades. Why can't you do some type of frequency technology to keep mosquitoes away? Mosquitoes aren't nearly as powerful as we are. I mean, look at the size of a mosquito to the size of the average human being. McFly, timeshare, lots of money goes into these corporations. The people that sign these laws oftentimes you wonder, why did you sign that law? You've got people that put you in office saying don't do it, but you're doing it anyway. At least the little people that help put you in office, right? The, the little people, the, the, those that are expendable. Those that are expendable in your opinion. Because obviously, when you see what happens, actions speak louder than words. Now, I'd like to see some more footage in Boston or in any areas. Um, you can actually find, I went to a website that showed different spraying, the schedule for the spraying, and that date wasn't on that website. It must have been another company or um, I don't know because it wasn't labeled on the mosquito calendar showing when they were spraying mosquitoes from the skies. This has been going on now for 60 years at least. They were doing this in the 50s. In trucks, people left, store, uh, left comments about how they used to play behind the trucks that left these clouds of nailed and, and different mosquito neurotoxins. Work on some nanotechnologies to go fight the mosquitoes. Create some, some robo-mosquitoes to go after the other mosquitoes or something. And then self-destruct. We don't spray everybody with neurotoxins. Come on. What's going on here? Question everything. Also, check out, if you haven't already, go to leakproject.com because I've got about 100 podcasts at leakproject.com. It's exclusive for Leak Project. And also, I am thinking of going out to South Dakota here shortly to my bunker. One of the nice things about having a bunker or a, uh, a location in a off-grid area, in a place that isn't by a large city, is you don't have to worry usually, or at least I don't have to worry as much about getting sprayed via neurotoxins from airplanes in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota. I don't have to worry about having a 4G, 5G, 6G, 7G, 8G, 9G, 10G tower right across the street. I don't have to worry about a nuclear reactor being 30 miles away or 15 miles away. I don't have to worry about... Um, massive traffic and zombies in a apocalypse walking around chewing people's faces off. If you're interested in getting in, I would recommend sending me an email like now, leakproject at gmail.com. Uh, I don't know how long these bunkers are going to be available. They're about 2,000 square feet. You can get into them right now for a very affordable price, in my opinion. 
So send me an email if you're interested. Uh, Vivos is the name of the company. You can go to terravivos.com and check it out. Uh, check out the X Point facilities. If you're interested, you can leave them an email. Make sure that you let them know Leak Project sent you because there are additional incentives that I have worked out with the company. You just have to let them know Leak Project sent you. So send me an email or send the company an email at terravivos.com, X Point, and be the change you want to see.